Hello there and welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show, episode number 332 with me, your host, Agostino Zynga. This is episode number 332. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Good, great, amazing. How am I? Hmm. On the mend, I guess, somewhere between fine and not so good. That kind of, you know, that really sweet in-between spot where you're sort of feeling it, but you're sort of not. I guess we're all kind of getting to that point where... um. We've probably had enough in it. We've all had enough, I think. Everyone's going crazy. I saw a video just recently of these kids in Brixton essentially what uh essentially putting a pressure on the Metropolitan Police to so so much to an extent where they actually run them out of their area, which is, you know, ridiculous really, considering they're just all these little you know, these little runts really for the most part, right? They're not the oldest, just the youngest ran out a whole brigade of police officers from Brixton because of a friend of block party. So I guess everyone's really on the brink. We have, um, you know, tennis players getting involved in the spot of Bova. Novak Djokovic has been, you know, accused of being an anti-vaxxer, not taking coronavirus seriously. He puts on a tournament, uh, goes to a nightclub. Then, you know, four people out of the five of his content of his kind of like group of people getting have been tested positive for the for it. You've got all the stuff happening with Bolton and the book in the US with Trump and shit. Um, I, I'm assuming a lot of things in New York are probably missed. So many situations popping up all over the place that makes you think, you know, society is on a brink. We are bursting at the seams. Everyone just wants to get back to some kind of normality. But from what we've seen so far, normality is far, far, far away from our current reality. So far away that I'd kind of hazard a guess that we're not going to see it again. Whatever we thought was normal prior to COVID is probably going to be you know it's a long and distant memory sort of like when you go to do a summer holiday with your friend somewhere exotic right you remember it but you don't really remember it you remember what you tell yourself to remember and i think this is what we're going to be faced with but you know you can there's one thing that remains constant one thing that doesn't change um you know regardless of the temperature regardless of the current political climates um racial tensions the one thing that you can can guarantee on is you're going to get a crazy american woman shouting and screaming at some sort of um, community what gathering about the perils of having to wear a mask and i'm going to play this video just because it made me laugh so 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 much earlier but this is an angry florida woman arguing about the mandate to wear masks and this is also off the back of you know the u.s had like a mad spike i think they were lucky maybe the first few months no the first couple of weeks after everything kind of got relaxed people didn't take it seriously and somehow over the course of what the last couple of weeks they've had big spikes in texas and parts of florida so you know naturally some of the senators and governors or mayors wherever who you know handles that shit over there they decided to um maybe reinstate lockdown which is really difficult to do or have mandated their population to be like hey put on a mask you know socially distance so we can get this thing under control but in the land of the brave home of the free they just can't put up with anyone telling them what to do i kind of you know have respect for it because i've got a similar kind of personality right when i get told to do something i usually grip my teeth and do the complete opposite just because right but under these current circumstances with it being a life or death situation it, it, you kind of beggars belief why you would do that anyway but let's play the video you literally cannot mandate somebody to wear a mask knowing that that mask is killing people it literally is killing people and my the people we the people are waking up and we know what citizens arrest is because citizens arrest are already happening okay and every single one of you that are obeying the devil's laws are going to be arrested and you <laughs> doctor are going to be arrested for crimes against humanity every single one of you have a smirk behind that little mask okay. but every single one of you are going to get punished by she's got really long legs and a small torso by the way i got you cannot you cannot escape god you cannot escape god i'm gonna say that again you cannot escape god not even with the mask or six feet okay six feet like i said before is military protocol you're trying to get the people to train them so when the the cameras the 5g comes out what they're, they're gonna they're gonna scan everybody we got to get scanned we got to get temperatured the kids have to go to school with masks are you insane are you crazy i think all of you should be in a psych ward right the heck now because none of you none of you know what the hell you are all talking about this is insane and then you want to open this meeting with a prayer to god are you praying to the devil because god is not listening to that prayer because all of you are practicing the devil's law 
laws. What happened to Bill Gates? Why is he not in jail? Why is Hillary Clinton not in jail? Why are all of, the, all of these pedophiles that are demanding you all to, to listen to their rules, why are they not in jail? Oh, is it because you're part of them? Thank are you, you part of the deep your state? Your time has expired. The deep state is going Ma down. And if any of you morning. are in the deep state, you're going down I'm, with it. I'm Amen, sister. Amen. But what a bizarre and utterly unhinged rent. There's so many things to pick apart, but, you know, nowhere, nowhere to start. But one of the things that's really telling is that usually things come in freeze, right? If, yeah, usually, yeah, usually things come in freeze. If you believe one thing, it's more than likely you're going to believe two other things, right? So if you're an anti-mask wearer, you're definitely going to be a believer in 5G and you're definitely going to think Bill Gates is the second coming of Satan, right? You're definitely going to think that. Um, but it's just in a combination, especially in that setting, right? You're there to basically maybe voice your um, opinions be around or to voice your, yeah, to basically voice your concerns around people having to wear masks, right? Mandated to wear masks. And that's why I mentioned, I think, in the beginning of this whole thing where I was like, ah, oh, I was a bit optimistic thinking, hey, some of these crazies and these psychos that are like anti-mask and don't want to be locked in, um, some of them that we see on social media, maybe they're the lunatic fringe and they might be a really moderate conservative group of people who have some conservative views around not wearing masks, you know, they're willing to impeach their second amendment and all this sort of stuff. Fair enough. But you don't see them, right? Maybe because they're not hysterical, but you don't necessarily hear the sensible arguments against it. Like, hey, um, I've read the research. It's only effect. It's uh, COVID only affects uh, this certain population of people. It only gets around this way in high, in you know, hotter climates. It doesn't necessarily have the same, um, you know, it doesn't cause the same amount of deaths or infections in cold climates. I don't know some evidence, or right? some showing that you've kind of done the reading. You've kind of looked at the data that everyone else has looked at, and you've made your own conclusion because you can do that. Right, data isn't just to data shouldn't be there to confirm your confirmations, right? It shouldn't be a confirmation based data your diet you're consuming. You should be looking at everything and trying to make some reasonable, rational conclusion. Or if you're just a normal citizen, you just you know go by what the experts say. But if you want to question things, fair enough. But if you're going to question things and you're going to you know dispute the concerns that are legitimate, at least come with a semi coherent argument. You can't go flying off the handle, you know, essentially uh, accusing your fellow, um, you know, your fellow community members of being, what, conspiring against humanity to essentially, what, lead us into some sort of, lead them, sorry, into some sort of military state. It's mad, isn't it? And as I said, like I said, it always comes in freeze. It's very rarely you get somebody who believes in not more mask who doesn't believe in other conspiracy theories. And that's what they are, really, isn't it? It's just madness, really. I don't understand it. And again, if you just look at it from just a plain, I don't know, you know, b basic level understanding, it's an airborne virus, right? That gets trans that gets um, passed around via, you know, your eyelids and your fucking mouths and whatever it may be. So it makes sense that you'd want to protect those uh passages so that you won't spread it around right that's just what you'd think is common sense fair enough you could argue maybe it's not necessary to wear it outside that's one you know strong argument for that right there's a lot of research to show that it does spread easy when you're in close proximity with people in an indoor environment and people are talking a lot and there's not a lot of you know um good airflow coming in the building fair but just to say you shouldn't wear it at all flat out is nuts but i guess that these are the same people who definitely believe that it's not really real they think it's all a fake it's all a hoax which makes me think sometimes it kind of puts maybe again you know not, not defending alex jones but you remember when everyone was getting when everyone was losing their minds because alex jones said the sandy hook massacre you know the school shoot you know, the sandy hook school shooting was essentially a, a fake right um that the kids that died they weren't, weren't real and everyone that's uh, all the parents that were crying on television destroyed that their families have been ripped apart were crisis actors now that is obviously an egregious crime you can't go around saying those kind of things but is this any more different than somebody clearly you know with, that looks perfectly sane for the most part you know you can't be just somebody a uh, state of mind based on the outside exterior but somebody saying hey I don't need to wear anything. This is all a big conspiracy. Isn't that the same when the tally in America is, I think, fast approaching 150,000 people have died of this virus? It's just a, so reckless and mad <laughs> to think that. And again, I think, keep your own counsel, right? I don't necessarily see the reason or you need to even, if you don't believe it's true and you want to, you know, maintain your right to go mask-free, then do it, innit? Um, keep your own house in order. But to 
shout and berate others for doing what they think is safe is really bizarre. I never actually, but again, maybe it's a caricature of an American citizen where you kind of always feel as if like you have to, um, I don't know, you have to broadcast your views or the way you live your life to others in the hope that you might influence them. I don't know, but very, very bizarre. I just thought that was interesting to start off. I was like, Jesus Christ, you went in ham. You know, Bill Gates, Bill, Bill Gates, Bill Clinton, 5G Towers, Satan, um, Sin, everything went on. Everything went there. Everything. She went hard, hard in the paint. But big up her wherever she is. Anyway, if it's your first time watching the show as per usual and you want to do me a favor, then make sure that you smash that like, hit subscribe, of course, if you want to come back. And um, if you have any questions regarding the show, obviously get involved in the whole comment section. And if you're listening via the podcasting app, please leave me a five star review and share with your friends. That's all I ask. Minimum viable dosage of input from you. That's it. But anyway, got some topics to run through. Let's go through them because I don't want to waste any more of your precious time. So number one, we can finally drink again. Hallelujah. So for all my um uk based lager louts for those of you who were um you know just crying at the fact that you weren't able to go out there and get on there and have a good time with your mates and put your hands in the air like you just don't care this is the news you've been waiting for pubs and places of worship from the 4th of july are going to be open um it's maybe the news is a bit you know premature we haven't necessarily got the virus under control but i guess from the very beginning this uh government that we have the tories were didn't really treat it that seriously and i think based on the comments we've seen lately from boris saying that you know he helps the common sense of the british public will lead us um to a point where we you know, can ease lockdown further down the line i think it goes to show that they were always kind of favoring the herd immunity the herd immunity approach um they didn't necessarily want to lock things down i think they wanted to do maybe maybe they wanted to have the kind of swedish approach to stuff but maybe you know the first couple of weeks of sweden did do the whole no lockdown the results weren't that good and they got a lot of bad press for it um so i guess that probably probably um, um made them a bit worried right the uk government and then they just got basically pressured into it, right? A lot of people on social, a lot of people on um, via those political phone-in shows were complaining about it. And it got to a point where they're just like, you know what, fuck it, let's just lock it down, it doesn't matter, and get it over and done with. Ooh. Excuse me, there's a police car going past the window, I should have closed it, but hey. So I guess in the end, locking down did work, you know, it did kind of settle things down a bit, it probably gave people some kind of level of confidence. Um, but some would argue opening pubs up again probably could spell a disaster period for the uk but i'm of the thinking that it's actually a good thing all things considered i think we're again to a point where some really ugly parts of the uk were rearing their ugly heads you know race issues and class issues in this country are kind of you know sweeps under the rug people don't like to speak about them openly um, naturally so right i don't really think you should be broadcasting your political or societal views to everyone under the sun but hey we have social media so I think we were getting to a point where, you know, there was going to be some real difficult conversations that needed to be had with people who probably can't have conversations. So it's probably better that some of the kind of, you know, bad actors who aren't necessarily in it for hum aren't in it for the overall unity of the country should be distracted by shops and pubs. And then the people who are actually about this life should be the ones sitting around the table trying to sort things out. But moving on, this is the topic regarding it. This is from The Guardian. It says pubs and places of worship from what the 4th of July, what lockdown rules mean for England. So if we scroll down here, the most important part, pubs and restaurants. So it's obviously the distance thing we know now. They've reduced it from two to one. That's going to make it a bit more viable for bars and restaurants to open up and do business. That makes complete sense. And then with the pubs and restaurants section, you've got pubs and restaurants in England can open can reopen both outdoors and indoors with what the government calls a COVID secure way with more hand washing ventilation and table service indoors rather than customers standing at the shared bar people may be asked to give their names but pub landlords will not check the exact mac cup of an individual's household that comes into the venue or requests to see identification that's obviously for track and trace purposes i think that's going to be a huge problem and um, i've already i'm already seeing a few people on social talking about you know giving fake names and whatever it may be but it would be beneficial again the government's been so hands offish with this sort of stuff like we do a lockdown but not so much no it's not a serious one there's been some weird things going on there so i think 
a better approach would be to maybe mandate people to carry ID around with them if you're going to do it seriously so that you could do a form of track and tracing, right? So that when the app does start, you've got loads of data points that you could then input into it. Um, but again, I just think that they were, you know, they just don't want to ruffle feathers. They don't want to ask too much of the nation. That's already a bit, you know, split on what to actually do. So maybe this is probably the best way to go about it. Um, it continues here, it says, they will not be asked to wear face coverings, a U <laughs> which is mad. A household will be able to meet with one other household at a time in a pub and restaurant, then choose another household on another occasion. Nightclubs will not yet be reopened, nor will casinos, and the government said that they will be task forced to ensure more businesses can open as quickly as possible. I've also heard that they're going to permit everyone with a temporary license that allows everyone to uh, allow their patrons to stand outside and take a beer. Um, and go there because most pubs in the UK unless you've got a designated area you're not allowed to take drinks outside in the front unless it's got a smoking area thing so that's going to be good because a lot of the pubs don't have gardens right um, big ones are sort of like sitting and chilling especially if you know a bigger chain usually those kind of nicer spots get taken up by chain groups and stuff so that's a good solution um, and again I understand the fact that casinos aren't open because you know the virus seems to spread a lot more in enclosed areas and if you're going to not allow people to stand around in pubs and only have seating areas hmm, that's where it comes a bit weird isn't it if you allow people to sit down in the pub in order of table service then what difference is it if you're in a casino playing on a slot machine somewhere it doesn't really make as much sense does it but hey what can you do there they got accommodation hotels bed and breakfast and holiday homes and campsites and caravans will be able to reopen campsites will be given guidance on how to be covid secure which i don't know how they're going to do that um work remains to be done on hostels uh where there are shared sleeping spaces can reopen safety will, will not be ready to reopen on 4th of july um and then of course the other bit that's a really important section here is um theaters and museums they'll not be able to reopen uh they'll be able to reopen sorry but not with live performances as the government said that they want to protect the health of performers they could show previous work on the screen cafes and bars and restaurants associated with the venue will be able to reopen however museums and galleries can reopen concerts and outdoor music festivals will not be permitted so i guess museums and theaters is a good thing um no sorry not theaters is it theaters yeah muse theaters museums sorry, mostly and galleries is a good thing i think that sort of like cultural release and the ability to kind of roam around and peek in and hang out in the gallery is really important um it's something that you forget you miss once you're in lockdown there's certain things you just don't pay much attention to um cinemas galleries um coffee shops whatever it may be right places that you just hang out in and waste some time with you waiting for your friend um those things are going to be important to reopen um and of course the live performance side of it makes complete sense so you're not gonna be have any no take late so all that sort of stuff is going on that makes complete sense as well and then exercise this is the only disappointing bit about it it's so gyms um indoor studios and indoor sports facilities swimming pools and water parks will not be reopening yet but outdoor gyms and parks many of which have been taped up by council since march will be um and those are those kind of little weird little free weight sort of stuff that we have around i think we have one near where i live and i think they have one in most parks and it does kind of like you know you could do a little what's that um, elliptical machine thing um they've got the bike with the yeah they've got a, sort of like a pedal bike thing most places have them um so that'd be great so you can do a little outdoor jimmy stuff but <sighs> there's a lot of conversation around oh why can't if pubs can open why can't gyms but we know right right if you're perspiring a lot in the gym and you're panting a lot um and there's not much ventilation in most gyms, especially the one i go to you know the ventilation is near point they don't have windows that can open everything is done through an air conditioner uh, or vents in the roof and stuff so the airflow in there isn't the greatest so again they can't really risk that and i guess considering the age of most of the people that go to gyms and especially local ones and it's just no it's not worth the risk i understand it but it's disappointing for me in that regard i would have hoped they'll be able to do some heavy squats and deadlifts uh by the 4th of july but i guess we have to wait until another time but hey what can you do move on why is it doing that for not let me hmm. anyway what else can we talk about here what is the screen why does sometimes when you do the hotkeys it doesn't actually let you do it i wonder why that is very interesting okay there we go it's working now cool so what's next uh next on the list here we have ba -ba 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 -ba. um cool let's move on to this bit here about no name no drinks 
So the the idea, where does it put it? No. So the idea around giving names, obviously, for the track and trace, don't need to say that. I've already mentioned this, but this is a cool little video that shows maybe what we're going to be in store for once pubs are reopen. This is sort of like the scene from New York. Um, it's pretty nice actually. It's more of an introduction into you know when you're on a holiday and you go to the local strip, especially in a Mediterranean country, and everyone's outside sitting on the grass, sitting on the curb, sitting on benches and stuff. It's just all outside stuff, and you're like, wow, this is amazing. We should have the same stuff in the UK. And then you get back here, and everyone's stuck inside with a grumpy face, uh, trying to get the attention of a waiter somewhere, right? Um, I think this is going to be a pretty good scene to see around um, London. I think it's been happening, obviously a lot during the time i've been indoors cause i haven't been around the hip areas but i'm sure in areas like such as hackney and dawson and stuff this is the scene probably people have been having because a lot of the bars and pubs have been doing selling what they're kind of leftovers in the kegs or whatever i don't know how they get around it but some places have been open for takeaway and delivery so it's a takeaway and collection but i like this sort of like vision of what bars will look like going forward and hopefully they will basically allow some of these places to have that license that allows them to have people to drink outside in the front especially if they have security what's the problem right that should be a good thing to deal with unless people get unruly but i thought this video was really cool I'll pretty quickly play it for you here so scene from new york where is it video of what it would look like in it okay cool i can't oh i didn't actually link it give me one second let me get up here boop, 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 boop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, I think it was called New York Lockdown something. New York Lockdown Bars. I think that was it. See, it should be here. Concerning everything. Where is it? Come on, you motherfucker. There we go. Here it is. So, this is the video that kind of shows what we should expect in the UK when bars are reopened. And there are some new concerns tonight that more people could be spreading the virus as crowds are seen gathering to drink on city sidewalks. Many without masks, many not social distancing. CBS 2's Christina Fan is live tonight on the Lower East Side with more on that. Christina. Well, Jessica, people were partying as if the coronavirus didn't exist. We're talking music, food, and lots and lots of alcoholic drinks, as you can see right here. When we asked people how they felt about COVID-19, many laughed it off. What a job in it. You've got to go next. You've got to go to a busy street where everyone's drinking and having fun with their friends. You've got to put on a mask, do this dorky thing where you stand next to a stinky bin and next to a perfectly placed police car. News is amazing in America, isn't it? From the East Village to the Lower East Side, sidewalks around the city resembled massive bar crawl Saturday as people drank and partied. The pandemic appearing to have disappeared from memory. I have an app in my phone that sends me a text every day that says you are going to die one day. So I get that text and I think, well, what's it matter now or in 50 years? It's time to... Tom is definitely a troll, by the way. Let's not let's not uh, be under any um, <laughs> illusion there. That was a perfect statement. Reopen the United States of America. The crowd so blatantly disregarding social distancing and many not wearing masks that they drew this social media rebuke from the governor. Don't make me come down there, he tweeted, including a video he saw of people on St. Mark's Place Friday night. But Charlie McCoy, out in the crowd himself giving free haircuts, said that so many people breaking the law is really an indicator that the economy has to reopen faster. We oh. haven't worked. And that's an indication as well. That's another one. Um, hairdressers are going to be open too, so I'm finally going to be able to get a haircut. And I guess a lot of boys out there are going to be um, doing some high fives, virtual high fives all over the UK about that because we've been missing out. All the footballers have got their haircuts and stuff and some celebrities, but we've been, especially I, have been in a constant state of rough rough and ready looking wise i quite like the beard the beard's could have been a nice addition but the top has just been so unruly it's just you know ugh. worked in an entire quarter 90 days and if you are
are in our position, then you would understand why you want to kind of get active again. But many people were uncomfortable with what they saw, including restaurant workers on Orchard Street on the Lower East Side, who tried at times with little success to disperse the crowds. You don't know who you might be coming in contact with. So when you see this many people, it's a little discomforting. So we, we try to keep people off our benches unless they're buying stuff from us. Set up local officials held a news conference Saturday night, calling on businesses and patrons to be more responsible. They also demanded guidance from Mayor de Blasio and Governor Cuomo to deal with the problem. It's a difficult situation because we're supposed to order, to take, and to go. But there's no place to sit. It's not until phase two. The mayor was previously adamant the city would not tolerate such gatherings. But we saw a number of cases where marked police cars simply rolled past large crowds. Leadership again, and it? Leadership is suffering. But I, I quite like that scene. I think it's going to be work well in the UK. Maybe it won't work so well in the US because they don't necessarily, you know, it's a pretty densely populated city um not much room apart from parks to go and sit down and enjoy a beer or whatever so even if you did pick up a beer from a local shop how far would you have to walk to go somewhere to have a sit down i'm not too sure maybe those little smaller cages where people play basketball you could essentially do something but they're not i don't think they're everywhere across the united states and they might be in some sketchy places across new york specifically so i guess that's an interesting problem but again the lack of leadership the lack of direction from the people in charge is one of the telling parts of this whole covid thing and it it's really revealed the shortcomings of uh, politicians in general right they just don't have a scooby especially in crisis moments they don't this is now I've, I've argued that and i think it's true there's so many amazing stories of past generals politicians mayors you know members of parliament whatever they may be who've done heroic things right when the chips were down and when it really mattered and they stepped up and sort of like you know um took responsibility and those are stories have been lionized right sometimes they have paintings of these monumental figures um located somewhere around the building that they're in right so it's a big it's, it's actually a big deal like to be like a, you know to know how to handle yourself in crisis but they don't seem to be able to do it for some reason this is a perfect opportunity as well, you'd imagine, right? If you handle this really well, people would remember it. Like, you'd go down in history. You, you, you could do no wrong. Similar to, what's his face? The mayor of New York when 9-11 happened, right? Just because he happened to be there and he dealt with it pretty well, all things considered. He's been, you know, even though his recent actions have sort of muddied his reputation, but for the longest part, he couldn't do anything wrong. And you imagine the same thing happen now, but unfortunately, not so much. But yeah, let's see what happens when they do reopen. Um... I'm hoping for the best. Um, I'm being optimistic that people <laughs> will behave themselves, but you know, us in the UK, we, you know, if you've ever seen a group of English people drinking in a foreign country, you know how we get down. So it might end up being an absolute bloodbath out there, but I'm hoping not, or a beer bath, whatever. I'm hoping it is people are on their best behavior because I think spending about three months at home, locked indoors, trying to make indoors fun as outdoors, has probably made people lose their marble. So once they get given some liberties, they should, should not, they should be in a position not to take it for granted, right? Because you've been indoors for so long. You hope so. You bloody hope so. But let's see. Let's hope. Let's see. Anyway, let's move on. What else is on the list to talk about here for you? Do, 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 do. Swiss Beats v Drake. Oh, that was a funny one, isn't it? A weird one, but a funny um, interaction nonetheless. Uh, la, 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 la. So, the original beef, I guess, started off the back of from what I've been reading, or not from what I've seen online, basically, basically via academics, is Swiss Beats and uh, Basar Rayman were on a on a Instagram live, you know, talking, having some fun. I'm assuming this was sometime after um, Alicia Keys had her battle with John Legend, and somehow throughout a com some way through the conversation, they get talking about records that hadn't come out. I think that's no. Somehow during the conversation, they bring up a topic that the record that Buster and Drake on had leaked, which is a pretty cool record. It sounds like something, you know, it probably sounds like a so far so gone era or nothing was the same. Um, it's, it doesn't sound like a, you know, current um, Drake. So maybe that was the reason why it wasn't released or maybe at that moment he didn't want to release it. I don't know. Artistic differences. And Buster Rams was pretty diplomatic. And then, you know, Swiss Beach just went out the window and just said, this boy is a pussy. I don't respect him. You know, swords of that I like, right? And then within the space of what less than 24 hours i'm gonna say less than 24 he rescinded the com he rescinded the comment um didn't want to didn't want any smoke <laughs> and then he basically apologized 
because off the back of that, Chubbs um, and this guy called T Gucci on TV or TV on Gucci, whatever his name is, decided to threaten Swizz. And it just got me thinking in general about um, Drake's position in the scene and just how much hate he seems to inspire from some of the older guard. He seems to always, there seems to always be a bit of a friction and a battle between um, Drake and some of the old guard in hip hop. And I don't really know what the deal is. Someone said somewhere I read, I maybe I don't know where I heard it from, that supposedly the issue comes off of uh, maybe some um, extra marriage relationships between Drake and Lisa Keys, which I'm not really sure is true. I'm pretty sure it's maybe to do with music. Someone didn't do a video. Someone didn't do an appearance. Someone didn't send back a guest verse. Well, something along those lines. It's usually about that. And I think what happens, my interpretation would be, if you're somebody of Swiss's level, regardless of Drake is the new kind of flavor of the month guy you still think you're the same you have the same sort of star power which you can argue he probably does so when someone of the same level as you kind of ghosts you or doesn't give you a reply that you like you sort of take it personally because you guess in your head you're like legends understand legends understand legends right it's a it's a it's a lions v lions sort of fight you're not you know you're not talking to a sheep you're not talking to some um you know some infant coming up in the game your season vet, they're a season vet. There should be like a mutual respect just because you know you've both achieved what you had to achieve. You both had the apex of the mountain. You're not necessarily trying to get any clout from the other person, which you probably are, but you know you could interpret that you're not. So you'd hope that they'd be a little bit more favorable in their reply to you, right? They'd probably be a little bit more responsive, right? They'd probably pick up your phone call with the first four rings or something. I get where he comes from. So then when Drake doesn't do that and he kind of beats to his own drum, which you kind of feel like he kind of gets a bit of pleasure out of making the older group um, of hip hop icons dance a bit to his tune, which, you know, you can't be mad at him for, especially if you can, you know, you try and picture how he must have been spoken to or dealt with when he was coming up and no one really believed in him, especially when I kind of found him during the whole MySpace era and during the whole OVO blog era. October's very own sorry blog era which um what's his face used to do uh oliver used to kind of um manage so you can imagine people used to think of who's this guy from degrassi canadian mixed race he's singing songs and shit no one probably took him seriously so he probably wasn't in, in a lot of situations that really rubbed him up the wrong way and let him you know and I imagine drake isn't or somebody that has i don't know he doesn't strike me as the most forgiving guy in the world even though you know he kind of got over the whole meek meal thing he kind of seems like somebody that maybe he might forgive but he's never never gonna forget so he probably <laughs> um remembered something like an elephant and just kept it in his back pocket and then when swiss came to ask for the favor he was like oh now you're gonna feel the power now you're gonna feel the difference the gap in between where i am at and where you're at and I guess Swiss Beast's apology kind of showed that. And the fact that he, I think in his first rant, he said something like, oh, I'm going to shoot his plane out of the sky, right? It's like, God damn it, you hate the guy a lot. And <laughs> it's such a mad statement. Cause I, and the funny thing about it is also, it's, it's, there's the dynamic between Swiss, Drake, and Alicia. Because you'd imagine Alicia and Drake are pretty cool. I'm not, I, I wouldn't imagine they're exchanging like that text to each other, but I'd imagine if they pass each other in a wool ceremony, you know, they'd be courteous, you know, some uh, bizu bizu cheek by cheek. But then <laughs> you have your partner um, publicly feuding with a guy who you respect his artistry and he wrote one of your best songs and fireworks and whatever it may be. It's just uh, difficult, difficult situation to be in, but bloody hell, Swiss beats. He went for it, man. He definitely, definitely went for it, but. The comment about suing his plane out of the sky was just hilarious to me. I just said, like, God almighty, he hates him a lot. He hates him so much. Um, and the video of him apologizing is just so sad, you know, when you see somebody of his age apologizing for something like that. Because it wasn't that, you know, he felt what he felt and he said what he said in it. But to apologize in less than 24 hours also makes me think what um, 6 9 said about if you want a career, you have to apologize to Drake. That's probably true. If you want to survive in a game, you have to not be for Drake and you have to apologize. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Blessings to everybody um, on this amazing Father's Day. Um, man, I want to address my actions on Zone Radio last night, man. You know, um, mainly because I was, I was in the wrong space. I was in the wrong energy, you know, and I hate that my kids and other people got to see me be on that side. I was a little nice. I was a little excited. You know, I definitely spoke on some things that um, that I definitely shouldn't have spoke on. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 
although I might feel a certain way about a certain person and different things like that, as a G, I'm man enough to, to say that, you know, I did that on the wrong platform and I wasn't supposed to do that like that because I, would, I wouldn't respect somebody else if they did that like that. You know? And you know what makes this a real issue? Because if I'm just thinking about it, this wasn't even his beef. This was Busta Rhymes um, should feel aggrieved by it, right? Drake came through Busta Rhymes to get a Drake Dilla beat. Just Rhymes jumps on the on the song, hoping Drake's gonna put it, and he doesn't. It should be Busta should be the one feeling more aggrieved by it. But the fact that Swiss jumped out the window makes you makes you believe, or you know, you're you're led to believe that there's real issues there, because when you don't like somebody. You look for anything to jump on them and hit them over the head with. I've been there, right? When you don't like somebody, you really want to stick it to them. Any slight infraction, whether it's kind of, you know, two steps removed, right? You're just going to go all out because it's giving you any reason to say, do something. It's like when, you know, you get in a conversation with somebody like, just say that word, say that phrase, say whatever it is, just so you can have an excuse to lay them in the ground. Isn't it? And I guess this is what it was for Swiss. And for him to apologize in less than 24 hours. And again, you have to remember, this is Swiss from Rough Riders, right? Just watch some of the Rough Rider videos from the early, from the, you know, late 90s, early 2000s. See how heavy they were in the streets, right? Read about some of the stuff they got up to, allegedly. And it makes you think, bloody hell, if this guy is afraid, right, of what may happen. Again, maybe it's mostly just monetarily, mon monetarily, right? I don't think beef is, you know, beef is not profitable, especially if you're on the losing side, right? Um, just ask Ja Rule, right? He's running around doing commercials for Greek restaurants, right? Um, off the back of what happened with him in 50 he didn't come out of that one looking too great um, but beef isn't beef is a risky game right especially if you get into it with somebody who's widely loved even no name is kind of going through the similar sort of thing right she got into a bit of a feud with J. Cole and now a week later people are starting to turn on her somewhat beef can be very risky especially if you play it wrong if, if you don't play your cards right so in this case maybe that's why he decided to kind of you know turn tail and be like hey I don't want no smoke because you want to keep your galleries you want to keep doing your verses you don't want to put you know because that could jeopardize that you just never know what people are connected with right he does a deal with apple um drake's basically in the pocket of apple he, you fuck up that that bag then you're done in that regard other executives kind of get put off by you it just doesn't it's not a good look overall so i understand the apology but god damn it man drake's got some power in this industry some real real, real power <laughs> and it shows isn't it? it bloody shows Anyway, move on. What else is on here that I thought was good? Word to the wise. Never get in an argument with a sassy gay guy. Yeah, this was really funny. So the Karen videos have slowed down for the most part online. It feels like, which is a good thing. I think some of, it feels like they've sort of learned their lesson because that's sometimes that's something that's always kind of puzzled me. There's been, what, I don't know, close to, what, over 50 maybe legitimate 20 Karen videos since we've been in lockdown, right? Things that have kind of affected both parties for the good and for the worst. Um, and you sometimes you think to yourself, like, haven't these people got the internet? Like, don't they go on social media? Aren't they aware that people are out there to maybe publicly embarrass them, sometimes through no fault of their own, and sometimes through some fault of their own? Can't they just be a little bit more well-behaved? It's similar to the issue they're having in America with the protest. Um you know off the back of the, the unfortunate death of George Floyd at the police at the at the hands of the police right you would have thought with all the bad press they get they would be a little bit more hands offish but nah they're doubling down they're you know they're spraying kids in the face they're pushing girls into the side of pavements they're splitting old man's head open and saying that he was what an Antifa member or some shit they're not even trying to be well behaved right they're just doubling down on the fact that no you guys are wrong we're right and the Karens is the same sort of thing they're not aware of what's going on on social media, which is weird because most Karens are like Facebook users, right? But that makes me believe that most of these interactions that we're seeing, especially the ones that are, yeah, most interactions we're seeing are coming from the point of view of the person that feels offended, right? And we basically, you know, maybe the, I don't know, a wide, a wide majority, well, yeah, a big majority of the, yeah, a large majority of the population probably agrees with most of the videos that we see right we're like hey yeah that woman's going over the top why is she getting into people's business why does she just go home she's being hysterical blah blah blah. but there must be a small minority of people too especially the mums on facebook who see that video and just interpret it a completely different way i'd love to see it i don't really have you know i'd love to infiltrate some of these mums groups or these pages that post these videos and just read the comments because for sure they just see it things completely different they're like nah 
that guy was in the wrong why did he get up in that business for it's not your right you I don't have any rights to record me all that sort of nonsense and this video is a perfect example of it but f unfortunately for the Karen involved she happened to step to a really really sassy gay black guy who kind of give, gave it to her from the very beginning and I think that's the only way you have to deal with people like this right you have to either inundate them with insults that they get you know they get a little bit dizzy and they fall over or or you just like ignore them just give them the silent treatment and just keep staring at them uh, like that um asian lady did in the park right when she was like exercising and the guy girls kept going at her she just kind of you know loads of long silent pauses that's what maybe helps but i thought this guy's approach was really cool uh, but how the fuck are we to eat how y'all how are we supposed to eat this woman gonna come over and ask me how why i ain't got my mask on mask right here she's gonna eat how yeah, how we supposed to eat? This woman gonna come over and ask me how? Why ain't got my mask on? Mask right here. She gonna ask me why I ain't got no mask on? I'm trying to eat my goddamn food. <laughs> now how the fuck I'm eat my goddamn food with no mask on? <laughs> His face, that neck crank is amazing. And this woman right here gonna ask us where our mask at? She ain't come over here and say, hey, how you doing? What you doing? How you been? Cuz what's up? Farmers Market, how you been? Susan Q right here wanna come over here and embarrass herself, and we ain't did nothing to her. And for a big surprise, look who's behind the lady. Over a damn mask. How we gonna eat? Y'all eating the same damn what how you gonna eat? He eating? Ain't he eating? Ugh. And is that's the that's the nightmare situation for any guy involved with the Karen, right? You're there minding your own business and she happens to get into some sort of altercation with a sassy black gay guy. Um and then you have to somehow beckon her to come back to the table and sit down. And by that point, the Karen, you know, everyone has pride. We'll have an ego. You don't wanna turn around and admit defeat you're gonna stand there and take the insults in some way hoping that your show of your show of um steeliness is going to somehow put the argument back in your favor but it doesn't right you already made this look like a mug no one <laughs> thinks you come out this looking great and the guy the husband's just there in the back saying come on karen please sit down love this is too much it's, it's not worth it or, you know, you don't say anything in the family tree because you don't want the gay guy to come after you either, right? You just don't want him to start cussing your white socks or shit. You just want to just be like as monotone as possible. And the other thing is, though, when you're embarrassed, you don't want to stand up and get her because you don't want people to be drawn to the fact that you're with her. But you just want to get her to come to your table. <laughs> well, no man on, Susie. Now, Susie, I'm, I'm, you, Susie. you on the news channel now, honey, because you the, you the fucked up. Guys. At this point, go come over here and ask me where my goddamn mask was. How I'm going to eat without my damn mask? What? And I wonder what it is. Is it just prescription medication that makes people want to get up and go to pe other people and tell them what to do? What is that all about? That's just the, the fascinating thing about Karen's. And hopefully someone does a, a study or documentary on it. Because maybe it's the effects of prescription drugs. I don't know. But imagine caring what other people are doing. Like, just in general like i get it with celebrities and stuff yeah they have notoriety interesting lives blah 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 but just a general you know average everyday civilian giving a shit what he or she's doing why would you care i know i don't I'm not worried about someone else wearing a mask or having gloves on who gives a fuck and again you're in a food court you're in a food court sitting down you see you look across the table and you see two dudes having a meal having fun busting joke exchanging some pleasantries some laughs and you feel the need to go over and let them know, hey, you should be covering that damn mouth full of chips and sauce, whatever that was on that plate. You think you're the, you're the one in that position to do so. And then unfortunately, <laughs> or sometimes, I don't know, maybe it's like, you know, when you, you think you see somebody that you don't like and you start already getting revved up. But then by the time you realize it's not the person, you really made like, you know, a bad impression. You kind of gave him a bit of a screw face. They said something aggressive to you and then you have to kind of get aggressive back. You can't back down by then. And maybe it's just me but maybe it's the same sort of thing right you start with this false premise or with this idea of what's going on by the time you realize it's not true it's really too late because you're already in, you know engaged in an altercation with an adult um i would prefer it if you know again sassy gay guy was in the right there but i would, I would appreciate if there wasn't always the need to pull out your phone and document it i think he was tearing her to pieces anyway regardless she was really super embarrassed just let her go home and i also like the fact that it didn't result in someone getting fired i think you can embarrass somebody in an argument without having to you know go outside follow them take a picture of their fucking license plate and all that stuff that's just not necessary um but bloody hell man god bless that woman like so embarrassing
And then the husband turned her back like, Chan, babe, babe, please come back, come back, come back, come back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Anyway, next. White Lives Matter and Techno Mainstream Lineup. Oh. Yes, so this is an interesting one, right? So this is a story that's been rumbling in the techno scene and electronic music scene for a while it seems like ever since you know the social media reparations have taken place it seems like the electronic music space is always well, but as well has kind of been like hey we need to readdress some things that are happening in the scene now i'm a bit conflicted by this whole thing right because i'm not too i'm not a fan of uh 50 50 gender splits on lineups i don't think that's the best way to approach those kind of things um i think people should be on the lineup through merit and through skill not through you know what you gender you happen to be born into born with that's just ridiculous and i'm also not a fan of you know affirmative action in lineups where you're like oh we need to have two black people two asians two whites it just sounds like a nonsense right you should effectively be trying to program a festival or club night around the stuff that you like and then you try and find the artist that would be the best to showcase that stuff and maybe be able to bring a crowd or whatever it may be right have a good dynamic between each other that's what you should be doing you shouldn't be using if if ever there's a place that doesn't need to be politicized it's nightclubs and the sort of like in you know, a festival scene and whatever maybe right you don't need to politicize that we have enough of that in our everyday life not everything has to be politics but on the same token i'm also aware that it does feel as if like the electronic music space especially techno disco house has been whitewashed right considering the roots it has in black culture right considering its origins right considering the fact that techno was effectively invented in detroit by a group of black djs and artists that for somehow for it to go from there through to be a completely whitewashed lineup at Berghain, Awakenings, uh, Deck Mantle, just doesn't make sense. It doesn't marry well, especially when you look at the fact that there's so many, there's an abundance of artists, whether they're male or female, um, happens to be black, you know, maybe from a Latino country or you know, South American, Central America, whatever it may be, um, some African DJs, there's loads of people out there who can fill that void. But it seems like there's a reluctance in an industry to try anything outside of the norm, which then leads to this circle, this kind of circular issue where some people complain they're not getting involved. The people that are involved complain that there's no there's no issue because they see other people that look like the people that are complaining, even though it's not really reflective of what's going on in the scene and there's no real solutions. And one thing that kind of brought this to light was this tweet that came, went around in the scene by this guy called Ryan Clover regarding the Awakenings live stream that I guess they're having. And I got it up on your screen, but basically he says, it's a shame to see Awakenings host a weekend digital festival that includes zero black artists, especially disappointing knowing that they took part in a blackout Tuesday and still don't think to promote PLC artists who literally founded the generation the genre sorry that they operate in. And if you look at the actual lineup, it's the typical lineup that you, you know, you know and love from an Awakenings Festival. Loco Dias Close, Joseph Craparati, Adam Bayer, Anna, US Vaughan, Mesha Plex, uh, Nina Kravis, Amelie Lenz, Bart Skills, Rebecca Speedy, Jay and Panpot, right? It's essentially the whitest lineup you could ever get, <laughs> really, if you think about what's going on now in awakenings defense they could be like hey we just book our friends right we're like a festival that we do not is it in amsterdam not too sure i'm definitely definitely it's in holland we're a festival but that you know we've got our roots steeped in the dance music industry the people that worked in this lion festival worked in all these big clubs blah 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 we just book our friends and it's not our fault our friends happen to be Bart skills rebecca speedy j pampo amelia lenzi the crab is adam bear blah, 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 right it's not their fault but there needs to be a bit more responsibility in the fact that you want your nights your festivals to reflect the people that attend it right that's something that i've always been consciously annoyed by sometimes with fashion brands right especially vetema in the early period or you know they've changed their, their casting uh, um, a lot recently but in the early period when you know maybe the first four scenes of vetema it was very evident the people who were buying it right mostly black mostly asian if you go to any metropolitan city where you have you know luxury fashion stores or you know um, multi-brand stores the people buying vetema were black and asian but then for the most part the entire lineup was just you know them kind of showcasing his central and eastern european friends it didn't make much sense really because those guys aren't wearing the stuff that he makes right they're buying their stuff from flea markets and he's basically interpreting it into vetema so it doesn't you know it kind of didn't vibe well but they addressed that cool no problem 
just reflect the people that where you're close. That's all you want to see in the runway, right? You don't want to see someone, you know, tokenizing a, uh, a race of people, but just reflect the people that wear it so that when they see themselves in the runway, even if it's uh, um, an idealized site, version of themselves right if they're slim or tall or whatever it may be at least they see somebody that looks like them on the runway that's really important and it's also important in dance music it's important to see like it's important to see somebody that looks like you reflected in the music that you're enjoying just so you feel a bit more accepted and it? it's just a nice feeling no one likes to go somewhere where you're the odd one out in a group it's just as weird and it's even more so in a electronic music space especially techno and hip house because there's no night you could go to maybe maybe some with some exceptions but it's very rare you're going to walk in and you're going to be the only black dude there's definitely one or two people that are non-white in the arena or in the space right who, who are maybe associated with a label or you know are friends with so and so artists so just have that reflect on a lineup and i don't really see why it's so difficult to do so but also understand on the side of awakenings you don't want to be put in a position where you're essentially um, being forced to book people who you don't necessarily think are that good or gonna sell any tickets because that's the other side of, of the electronic music space that's really hard to figure out is is all this complaining online about lineups um, helpful is it gonna really change anything because maybe some of these nights some of these festivals are just a money-making operation they're not essentially there to save our scene or to contribute to the culture right or to give back they're not there for that they're there essentially as a play thing for somebody that has a lot of disposable income who happens to like music as well and has connections they just put on a basic it's sort of like their version of putting a house party they throw this massive festival they split the costings with some of their other affluent friends if they get profit amazing but you know they want to go down in history as somebody that put together this really wide range of festival so if that's the case why not just um remove yourself from that conversation and put on your own thing right i think of that queer festival called hole that they have in germany right a good example um i remember when they were trying to do some um fundraising to make sure that they are around still for next year because obviously this year's festival got cancelled due to the covid and i remember them read this reading in the, in the whole um in the statement they put out press release that they're saying oh we don't ever make any money they just always break even and they only put it on because they essentially went to provide a safe space for people within the queer community right queer lgbtq plus which is amazing it's great but i think that's a better use of their time than trying to force i don't know a uh, primavera to acknowledge the artists that they want to kind of prop up or to provide a space for them that they feel safe in it probably makes more sense for them to kind of pull their resources step away pull their resources and put on their own festival or night that is going to better address or better showcase the scene of the music that they are kind of a part of that makes more sense isn't it but also understand the other side of it where it's like why should you always have to make your own thing if you just want to get involved in music that everyone else is enjoying it's really difficult man. i'm not too sure what the right solution of it is but the, the kind of the work twitter techno crew are just not happy and i definitely sympathize with it but i also understand that if you're the awakenings crew you just might think hey we just put people purely based on the number of tickets that they can sell and if they happen to be our friends even better but you can't deny that everyone on that list is going to sell ticket right they're going to sell at least i don't know let's say 50 tickets each person can definitely sell and then awakenings have to make up the rest through marketing all that sort of stuff it, it's it's it probably makes more sense again they're probably having to shell out a lot more in fees because i'm sure these people don't pay for they don't play for a hundred dollars an hour so that's a something they're going to have to kind of you know work out but I don't know what the right answer is really in that regard that's my thing i'm not a fan of 50 50 gender splits and i'm not a fan of affirmative action when it comes to lineups but there definitely has to be some sort of solution out there to better reflect the dance floors that's really it really isn't it you go to panorama bar you know on any given weekend and sometimes the lineups are like you know what i mean there's not much variety in terms of the kind of people that are playing behind the decks when you look at the people that you're dancing among you're like <sighs> there's a bit of a disconnect there but again maybe that's not the place maybe we have to treat these festivals and these big clubs as the major leagues and um, if you want to come up and be like you know if you know if you want to have a chance to have music that you like or the scene that you like reflected maybe you go to like a something a little bit more i don't know grassroots maybe that's a thing i don't know um but also understand the fact that you know why shouldn't why shouldn't somebody why shouldn't a counterpart why, why shouldn't somebody that looks like why should somebody have the same status as an Anna but doesn't 
isn't white why shouldn't they get the same opportunities and i really don't know what the answer is in that regard maybe it's a question for the promoters and the event bookers because they're the ones that really hold a lot of the power because they basically have relationships with the agents and all that stuff and they book the same people so maybe it's it's a it's a push to kind of get those people to be more inclusive take more risks in the lineup i'm not really sure but it's a very very messy topic to get involved in because there's so much intricacies that go on there people don't really want to admit but i thought that was interesting to touch upon next on the list here we have uh medic um should we that one now let's move on to that one trying to cancel your ideas crystal yeah fucked up i think that's maybe that's might be it for the show you know and do the rest of them later actually let's do this medic one i thought this was quite funny well funny not so much funny but these kids going out and protesting is one thing right but then the constant screaming um for medical help as if they're on some sort of battlefield is very 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 bizarre um and this video displays some of it if i can get it to come up hopefully it's coming up now give it a couple seconds here we go there we go so let's go here is the video is it playing nope <laughs> So the scene i think this is maybe what this is in front of the white house i'm assuming um group of protesters protest against police brutality and then i guess they get sprayed with pepper spray or something and it's just so many random cries of medic like again like i said it was like it is a sight like it was a scene in 1917 right um they're on they're essentially like at war somewhere and it's like you put yourself in a situation kind of grow up grow a pair of balls it's pepper spray it's not a fucking you know a bazooka to the chest <laughs> <laughs> what absolute oh just come on man like if you're gonna put yourself in harm's way at least be that's the maybe they're the perfect sort of like caricature for the person that like, you know they say oh you know people have a lot to say until they get punched in the face right maybe that's it because they haven't been involved in real conflict when it does arise you assume you have this sort of like weird entitlement that as soon as you scream at medic everyone's going to drop whatever they're doing and make sure you're all right it's sort of like maybe a reflection of how you were treated when you were younger you fell on you fell on the floor and you, you fell off your bike and your mum came over straight away and kissed your knee better and put a little plaster on it with little dinosaurs or whatever maybe or you were like myself and you fell on the floor your parent didn't know because you were nowhere near the house so you just didn't get on with it and now your legs are all covered in scars like mine are but it's just a very very bizarre way to kind of conduct yourself Especially at a protest. And I love how they get really confrontational and then as soon as the police start like you know advancing forward, they start putting their hands up as a kind of a sign of like uh passiveness. But it's like no, you're not passive. You've probably got a couple of firecrackers in your pocket, you've been you know, screaming obscenities at these already riled up police officers and then suddenly when they put it on you, you start putting your hands up like don't shoot, please don't shoot. <laughs> <laughs> hearing them coughing is just it, i don't know why it brings me so much joy but it's just funny like come on man if you again if you're gonna be about the action be about the action <laughs> Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it, man. That's probably, it's kind of fizzled down a bit, though, isn't it? Since everything has sort of like gone back to normal, which is a good thing again. I think the people that actually need to speak about this have spoken about this, and the ones left over now are what trying to prop up these um, autonomous zones in random places <laughs> across America. It's just a very interesting place to be in. But what can you do? Anyway. That is an hour of the show. Um, as per usual, thanks so much for tuning in. If you want more information regarding myself, make sure you click the what 
homepage link in the description axelzinger.com make sure all my deals are there blog social media accounts and stuff you want to follow um, make sure you do that if you're listening via the podcasting app of course make sure you leave me a five star review and share the show with your friends if you're watching it via the youtube smash like hit subscribe leave me a comment and all that good stuff and i'll see you guys again tomorrow but oh before you go i've also got a new mix out at the moment test mix number 47 it should be available now on the old soundcloud let me get it up on here to show you but it's number 47 i'm gonna end the series at 50 i think the whole test mix name thing's a bit naff and then probably switch to doing some video stuff at pirate up and coming just so i can have more videos of me playing behind the decks you know people need to see visually that you're doing the damn thing but yeah if you like a bit of tech house you want to listen to that stuff it's on the screen now check it out it's a it's just a good mix i think it's fairly decent i'm i know i'm not that shit when it comes to mixing to hear more of course uh, click the link in the below there'll be a link in there with the whole mix you can check out yourself but um yeah definitely check it out test mix 47 i'll put a link in the bio for you to see it yourself or to listen to yourself stream it on soundcloud and download it to your phone all that good stuff but until then see you guys very very soon be safe take care